Hello friends, I welcome you all in our ninth lecture which is based on enzyme mechanism which we have mentioned in our previous lecture. So we all know about enzymes which are nothing but catalyst. Every enzyme has unique fashion of catalysis mechanism. So on the basis of style of enzymes catalytic mechanism or we can say pattern which is followed by enzyme for catalytic activity we have six different classes namely first class is acid base catalysis second class is covalent catalysis third class is metal ion catalysis fourth class is proximity and orientation effect in catalysis fifth class is catalysis by approximation and last class is an electrostatic method of catalysis I want to clear one thing here which is very important that please don't get confused with enzyme class with enzyme catalytic mechanisms class. We had discussed about enzyme classes in our part second of eighth lecture. Here we are talking about enzymes catalytic mechanism classes. We are discussing this topic in our ninth lecture. So we focus on this. So whenever we read about enzymes in reference books, journals or in and articles when we study about enzyme catalysis we always find the enzyme mechanism or style of function always falls in one of the above mentioned classes so it's my advice to you that please remember the names of these classes we will discuss about one of the mechanism style of enzyme with respect to example in today's lecture so your idea will be clear what we are talking here about enzyme mechanism. So let's start with first example of ribonuclease A enzyme. I would like to ask you to apply your knowledge of second part of 8th lecture to describe this name ribonuclease A. Because the name of enzyme says many things. Here ASE is suffix indicates that this is an enzyme here we are talking this name indicates or gives an information that the substrate name must be a ribonucleic acid to what we call as rna so now we have information that what substrate is which is a rna it is very essential to know about the structure of substrate in order to understand the enzymatic mechanism when we look at the structure of RNA which is important to understand enzyme mechanism in this case RNA is a nucleic acid which is always and always single stranded in occurrence as nucleotides are attached together so the structure will look like this which includes nucleotides attached together in one line by the bonds between two nucleotide which is called as phosphodiester bond. Why it is called as phosphodiester bond? Let's understand this. Here I am showing you an animation. We are going towards the RNA molecule. Uh, indirectly we are saying zoom in the RNA molecule. We have reached up to the level where we can see two nucleotides are interconnected by one phosphodiester bond. When we talk about a nucleotide which is a larger molecule in which you will find one nitrogen base one sugar molecule and one phosphate group these three members comes together to create a nucleotide there are various nucleotides such as atgc we are not going to talk about them in a detail because that is not our aim we are restricted up to the enzymatic mechanism we are understanding the structure of substrate which is rna in this nucleotide when you look at the sugar molecule which contain 5 carbon that's why it is a pentose type of sugar molecule all these 5 carbon atoms are numbered as number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 and number 5 in this location as i have mentioned in this diagram but the carbon in sugar molecule are nominated as prime carbon means the number 1 carbon will be called as 1 prime, second carbon will be called as second prime, 3 prime, 4 prime and 5 prime. 
प्लीज नोटिस दैट नाइट्रोजन बेसिस आर ऑलवेज अटैच टू द फर्स्ट प्राइम कार्बन वेर द सेकेंड प्राइम कार्बन कंटेन हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप विच इज ओ एच द थर्ड प्राइम कार्बन विच इज एक्चुअली इन्वॉल्विंग द फॉस्फोडाइस्टर बॉन्ड विथ द फिफ प्राइम कार्बन ऑफ नेक्स्ट न्यूक्लियोटाइड इन केमिस्ट्री वेन एवर शुगर मॉलिक्यूल क्रिएट्स बॉन्ड विथ अदर ग्रुप सच एज हियर पेंटो शुगर इज क्रिएटिंग बॉन्ड विथ फॉस्फेट ग्रुप द ऑक्सीजन इज इन्वॉल्व इन दैट केस वेन एवर ऑक्सीजन आर इन्वॉल्व इन शुगर मॉलिक्यूल बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन केस दैट बॉन्ड इज नोन एज ईस्टर बॉन्ड सो हियर यू कैन सी दैट फॉस्पेट ग्रुप इज एटैच्ड विथ टू डिफरेंट शुगर मॉलिक्यूल्स सो टू ईस्टर बॉन्ड्स आर प्रेजेंट दैट्स वाई द फॉस्पेट ग्रुप एंड टू ईस्टर बॉन्ड्स रिप्रेजेंट्स फॉस्पो डाई ईस्टर बॉन्ड राइबो न्यूक्लियोज ए आर दोज एंजाइम्स विच आर फेमस टू ब्रेक दिस फॉस्पो डाई ईस्टर बॉन्ड सो बाय ब्रेकिंग द बॉन्ड राइबो न्यूक्लियोज ए सेपरेट्स द न्यूक्लियोटाइड फ्रॉम ईच ऑदर इन सिंगल आर एन ए मॉलिक्यूल सो यू मस्ट हैव अंडरस्टूड नाउ वाई इट इज इसेंशियल टू नो अबाउट द सबस्ट्रेट इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट एंजाइमेटिक मैकेनिजम टू कैरी आउट दिस रिएक्शन टू कैरी आउट द ब्रेकडाउन ऑफ फर्स्ट प्रोडाइस्टर बॉन्ड राइबो न्यूक्लियस ए एंजाइम शोज वन ऑफ द टाइप ऑफ एंजाइमेटिक मैकेनिजम विच इज एसिड बेस कैटेलाइस मैकेनिजम विच इज ए फर्स्ट टाइप ऑफ एंजाइमेटिक मैकेनिजम क्लासेस वी हैव जस्ट डिस्कस इन टू मिनिट्स बिफोर फॉर एनी एंजाइम वेर सबस्ट्रेट बाइंड्स टू दैट एंजाइम the area of the enzyme where substrate binds is known as an active site the active site of ribonucleus a enzyme shows two important amino acid residues which plays very significant role in whole acid base catalysis mechanism these two amino acid residues are histidine 12 and histidine 119 so what is difference between histidine 12 and histidine 119 let's understand this first we have an enzyme which is nothing but a protein which is perfect three dimensional structure which is we can say a tertiary structure of protein we have already discussed about tertiary secondary and primary structure when we up open this protein or we can say unfold this protein we will get primary structure which is nothing but a chain of amino acid which is present in the protein so if you start to count the amino acid number from amino group you will reach up to the 12th amino acid which must be a histidine amino acid so the number is histidine 12 and if you go on counting you will reach up to the 119 amino acid which is again histidine amino acid the total amino acids which are present in ribonuclease a are 124 only out of them two amino acids plays an important role in acid base catalysis in this case what we are saying this so when three dimensional structure forms ribonuclease a case the active site contain the histidine 12 and histidine 119 in such a location where it is possible for that enzyme to carry out that reaction so after collecting the all information finally we have reached up to the main topic about enzymatic mechanism the whole reaction comes under the acid base catalysis type and it happens in two steps the first step is cyclization step and the second step is hydrolysis step before talking about the steps which are involved we must know why histidine is selected here for this action because of the unique feature of histidine which is a pi value is near to the 7 that's why histidine can acts as acid as well as the base depends upon the situation because the pi value is close to the 7 which is the solvent's ph in which all these reactions are going to happen in the cell so first step is cyclization step where histidine 12 acts as a base initially and attack upon the hydroxyl group of second prime carbon of sugar molecule which is shown here and by attacking histidine abstract or take up the hydrogen atom from second prime carbon and leaves the oxygen atom 
in negative state this negative state oxygen do not remain as it is it attacks immediately upon the phosphate group and creates the cyclization reaction here in this picture you can find that the the phosphate group is interwoven between second prime and third prime of sugar molecule here histidine 119 shows its action by acting as an acid which donates the proton to the five prime group of next nucleotide and result into the formation of hydroxyl group upon the five prime carbon of next nucleotide so the bond between phosphate group and the five prime end of the next nucleotide get dissolved or get breaks so you can see the one ester bond has been broken and phosphate group remain attached with the one nucleotide and other nucleotide get separated all these things are happened in cyclization step so the next step is hydrolysis step whenever we say hydrolysis it means definitely the water molecule is comes into the picture this water molecule which is h2o is very useful in this step because histidine 119 who have lost its proton then after losing the proton it acts as a base and take up its released proton from water molecule so by doing so the histidine 119 get again protonated and come back to its original state where it was before the reaction and the hydroxyl ion is remaining free so taken up a proton molecule from water molecule by histidine 119 result into the formation of hydroxyl ion and this remaining hydroxyl ion will go and attack upon the phosphate group in this case histidine 12 acts as an acid and donate its proton to the second prime carbon of oxygen from where it took that proton and by doing so that enzyme is successful to cleave or to break that rna molecule into the two pieces by acid base catalysis fashion or mechanism here you can notice the behavior of histidine with respect to the reaction step in cyclization step histidine 12 acted as a base and histidine 119 acted as an acid where in hydrolysis step histidine 12 acted as an acid and histidine 119 acted as a base the substrate was rna molecule and the product is broken rna molecule after breaking the rna molecule enzyme come back to its original state from where it has started its reaction so histidine 12 initially was deprotonated and histidine 119 was protonated so the enzyme came back to its original state from where had entered in the reaction process which is a tagline that enzyme do not get consumed during the course of reaction so this was the one example we studied about ribonuclease a there are tremendous examples available in reference books so we will stop our lecture today at this point here you can see a big circle of my photograph on which by clicking you will get subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on bell icon too so you will get notification about new lectures so see you soon in next part of our ninth lecture with new interesting example of enzymatic mechanism in order to study about enzymatic activity thank you